Hi, I'm Miranda Walker Follett, and I'm from the University of Arizona Astronomy Club. I'm going to be talking to you today about the research projects that we do in the club and how they contribute to the undergraduate experience and retention. So we have three main research projects, the Exoplanet Project, the Kepler Data Project, and the Radio Astronomy Project. So the Exoplanet Project is our longest standing research project and it's actually 100% undergraduate run. About four years ago, Jake Turner, who just presented, and Kevin Hardigree Ullman, who will present, who were two undergraduates in the club at the time, um, got interested in exoplanets and decided to do a research project on them. So they applied for time at the 61-inch Kuiper telescope near Tucson, and they got the time, and they actually used uh, in, uh, knowledge that they had gained from their observational astronomy course to take and reduce data from an exoplanet transit. Um, since then, the project has expanded greatly and they're actually helping younger students to get started in research and uh, to learn about the research process. Students who are involved in this project learn about how to use IREF and Linux, both of which are very useful later in their careers. Um, and they specifically learn how to apply for the time, take the data, reduce the data, and analyze the data, and even uh, prepare the data for publication. Uh, the project published a paper in January of this year and have produced uh, about 16 posters over the last six AAS meetings, wow. including this one. <laughs> um, so, uh, these students can then use this information um, and knowledge to um, apply that to future research projects that they may take part in, or even their observational astronomy course that I mentioned earlier. This course can also be taken, or this project can also be used as um, an independent research course for credit at the university, which is really useful for some of the students. The Kepler Data Project is actually our most recent project, um, and it was inspired by a desire for more interaction to be happening between the undergraduates and the graduate students at the U of A. Um, this project utilizes the massive amounts of data that the Kepler satellite produces um, and is free for the public. Um, to look for possible star spots and star stellar variation in F, G, and K stars. Um, they use, students use uh, a data reduction pipeline in PyRAF that is specifically designed for uh, data reduction of the Kepler data. Uh, this, this project can also be used as for course credit. Our radio astronomy project is run by Dr. Yancey Shirley, who is an amazing advisor. Um, and it's uh, mainly uh, research about various aspects of molecular clouds. So past and current projects include studies of infall, outflow, and general core properties in the clouds. Um, this is also a NASA space grant project, so students have a wonderful opportunity to take part in that and work with Dr. Shirley as well. Um, the, the project uses mainly the 12 meter telescope that I have a couple pictures of there, um, the 12 meter ARO telescope on Kitt Peak, and, uh, and students learn how to apply for time as well and learn all about the intricate details of using a radio telescope, which can be pretty tricky at times. And um, they basically get a lot of research experience and valuable connections um, through uh, peer mentoring. There's a lot of peer mentoring and also through um, working with Dr. Shirley. So we have several different uh, research projects, all of which implement different organizational structures to function. All of these structures provide different, or different benefits to students, and they all seem to work very well in our experience. Um, in fact, a number of students have specifically stated that participating in astronomy club research has had a direct effect on their choice to stay within the major or even within the university. 
So we found that getting involved in research early on in their career, in their undergraduate career, in addition to major coursework, is extremely beneficial and influential in students' career path choices. Thank you. Yes, uh, two quick questions. One, the 12 meter dish yes. is not currently operational, is that true? That's correct. Okay, so yeah. is that project going to be on hold or is um, going to be working with the... I think Dr. Energy? Shirley is hoping to get some time on the submillimeter telescope on Mount Graham. Um, we probably, we take a lot of trips to the 12 meter um, and actually go there to take our data, uh, which we probably won't do because the submillimeter telescope is a four hour drive as opposed to an hour drive. Um, but hopefully we'll still be able to get data and work on that. Another really quick question. Um, so for the Exoplanet Project, do you folks work with the planet hunters in Zooniverse at all? Um, not much currently. Um, we're, we, we take our own data and we pretty much uh, more or less stick to our own data. But we do work with other people and anybody who's at all interested. Thank you. Yes. Who funds all this? <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Just talking about driving an hour. Like, do you pay your own gas? Or yes. You get we pay our own gas. Um, we, as Ali will talk about in a minute, Allison, um, we do outreach projects and we get a little bit of money from that. And so, if the club can afford it, we try to fund uh, things like gas and stuff as much as we can, uh, but people do that on their own as well. Yeah. Do you guys accept donations? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, here's my hat, Ed, pass it around. <laughs> Other question, yes. I don't know if you would know this, but do the faculty get any professional acknowledgement or support for working with you? Um, I'm. Buell might be able Buell to see that. Buell's our department chair for those yes. of you okay. who don't yeah. know. And he's been very they, they, they get recognized internally in, in service and in the department. Whether or not they're adequately recognized by the public, I don't know. But, but certainly, certainly I know, and, and in the evaluations of the faculty, we, we appreciate their involvement with the club. And I'm sure that their, their mentees appreciate them. <laughs> very much. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Mary Kay, go Is this first. something incoming freshmen are invited to participate in, or do you have to be around for a while before you get started? No, incoming freshmen are absolutely encouraged. Um, we try to come to the um, freshman orientation for the major. Um, it's sometimes a little bit difficult to get in contact with freshmen, um, just because they aren't specifically integrated into the department yet. Uh, but we try to allow anybody who is at all interested in joining. I'd like to ask a question. What was the topic of the paper that you published with, in association with the exoplanet work that you were doing? Um, we were actually searching for a magnetic field around a, an exoplanet, um, and we didn't really find any magnetic field, but it was a very good um, research project. And I have a follow-up for that. What journal did you publish it in? And can you tell everyone why you picked the particular journal you did? Yes. So we published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. And honestly, our main reason for picking that is um, the, it was the lowest um, submission cost. And we couldn't afford, as a club, to uh, publish in another journal. Smart decisions. <laughs> and. And how could you apply the model that you have for programs like yours to other programs that have less facility availability than U of A? Right, well, we do have a couple projects that do utilize um, telescopes that are not our specific uh, local telescopes, such as the Kepler Data Project. Um, there are a lot of, there's a lot of data that's publicly available, and so other universities could be using